Victor Tsas is a fictional supervillain who appears in comic books published by DC Comics, usually as an enemy of Batman. He is a serial killer who usually kills with a knife and carves a tally mark somewhere on himself for every victim. Fictional character biography Tsas first appeared in Shadow of the Bat No. 1 as part of the Batman, the last Arkham four-part story arc, and his origin story was told in Batman Chronicles No. 3. Both stories were written by Alan Grant and drawn by Norm Briefgill. As revealed in the foreword to the trade paperback form of The Last Arkham, Tsas's name is derived from that of psychiatrist Thomas Zors. Grant saw the name while visiting a library. Equals origin story equals, in Batman Chronicles No. 3, told by Tsas himself, it is learned that Victor Tsas was the head of his own international company and had amassed a large personal fortune in addition to his family's wealth. At the age of 25 his parents died in a boating accident, sending him into a deep depression. He turned to gambling, losing money in competitions around the world. One night, he ended up in a Gotham City casino known as the Iceberg Lounge, where he gambled everything he owned and ended up losing it all to the Penguin. Afterwards he saw that his life was empty, driven by desire, and there was no point to his existence. While he was attempting to commit suicide by jumping from Gotham Bridge, a homeless man tried to assault him with a knife after he refused to give him money. Instinctively grabbing the knife, Tsar saw in the man's eyes that all life is meaningless and that nothing nor anyone matters. He then proceeded to stab the man to death as a gift for saving his life. From then on, he dedicated himself to liberating others from their pointless existence. He usually preys on young women, but has no qualms over whom he murders. He slits his victims' throats and leaves them in lifelike poses, adding a tally mark to himself each time. He has been diagnosed as insane and is regularly incarcerated in Arkham Asylum courtesy of Batman, breaking out on occasion to carry on killing. Equals later story arcs equals, during his debut appearance in Batman, Shadow of the Bat's opening story arc, Batman, The Last Arkham, Tsas bribes a contractor to include a secret passage leading out from his cell during the asylum's reconstruction under its new head, Jeremiah Arkham, who inherited the asylum from his uncle, Amadeus Arkham. Although Tsas is restrained during the daytime when he is being treated personally by Jeremiah Arkham, he is brought back to his cell at night where he would leave the asylum through the secret passage, unbeknownst to the night guards. After murders fitting his modus operandi begin surfacing, Batman and Commissioner James Gordon fake Batman's insanity in order to get him inside the asylum and investigate Sars. Jeremiah Arkham is exceptionally brutal towards Batman, who had supposedly murdered a police officer. Over the course of the treatment, Sars had warped Jeremiah's mind and turned him into a mere henchman. Due to these continuous conversations with Jeremiah Arkham, Sars realizes Batman is a plant and subsequently murders both the contractor and another inmate at Arkham who knows of Tsas's ploy. Both Nightwing and Batman catch up to Tsas when he tries to escape for the final time and put him back in Arkham. Tsas later appears in Part 3 and 4 of the Nightfall saga. In Part 3 of Nightfall, Tsas takes an all-girls boarding school hostage and holds the students at knife point until Batman arrives briefly leaving to kill two police officers who were sent to arrest him. Though weakened both physically and mentally due to the strain of pushing himself for so long to capture the escaped inmates, Batman fights with Tsas and tries to ignore the lunatic's mockery. He finally snaps, after Tsas says that they are really one and the same, and administers a savage beating. In Part 4, Tsas's appearance is a mere cameo depicting him being led out of the boarding school by police and Harvey Bullock personally threatening him. During the No Man's Land storyline, Sars is a patient in Dr. Leslie Tompkins Field Hospital for a brief while, proving to be eminently deadly even when unconscious and strapped to a stretcher when he manages to open one of the arteries of a field orderly with his fingernails. Once he wakes up, he is confronted by Dr. Tompkins, whose utter selfless charity sharply contrasts with his total emptiness. She briefly gives him pause, but is finally repelled by his profound evil. Tsas later appears in Detective Comics No. 796, where he fights Stephanie Brown in her role as Robin. He attempts to slit her throat, 
but is distracted by her unexpected ferocity and falls back, where he attacks and attempts to kill Batman. However, Stephanie eventually defeats him. Sass makes a brief appearance in Infinite Crisis No. 7. He is part of the secret society of supervillains and is one of the many of their members sent to attack the city of Metropolis. The society loses. Sass is not seen in any major villainous role again until Detective Comics No. 815, released in March 2006, entitled Victims. Before a quarterly psychiatric review, Sass kills his guards with metal poles attached to his neck bracket and escapes to kill again. Batman hunts for Tsas, which proves unsuccessful until Tsas gains access to a charity event and stabs his beloved butler, Alfred Pennyworth, in the stomach. Wayne drives Alfred to the hospital, saving his life. To lure Tsas to him, Wayne holds a press conference in which he announces that Alfred is still alive. Having already made a scar for Alfred, Tsas realizes that his tally is off by one during the second part of Victims. After a fight with Batman, Tsas proceeds to the hospital to finish off Alfred. Batman catches him off guard and knocks him unconscious, thus saving Alfred's life and sending Tsas back to Arkham. Throughout this appearance, Cliff Chiang's artwork portrays Tsas with visual elements commonly associated with the skinhead subculture, including work boots resembling Doc Martens, tight jeans, a white tank top, suspenders or braces, and a close cropped hairstyle. Additionally, Chiang's portrayal of Tsas is more outwardly physically imposing than the gaunt, wiry physique created by Briefgal and favored by most subsequent artists. No dialogue in the story arc references Tsas being a skinhead nor does it explain his increased musculature, and it is likely these visual elements were the decision of the artist. Tsas is later seen again in the Gotham Underground story arc where, in issue 3, he appears in a disguised Batman cell at Blackgate Prison and attempts to kill him with a knife. He ends up cutting Batman's arm just as he was waking up and the resulting fight ends with Tsas being knocked unconscious and Batman being rushed to the hospital. A naked, desperate and totally deranged Tsas appeared in the first issue of Batman, Cacophony, written by film director Kevin Smith killing a young couple and threatening their children before Batman subdues him. His thoughts move so quickly that there are no spaces between the words. In the issue, Batman says that of all the criminals he fights, he hates Tsas the most. In the Battle for the Cowl storyline, Tsas is recruited by a new black mask into a group of villains aiming to take over Gotham. This arrangement is explained further in a continuous story arc through the Streets of Gotham series with Mask hiring Tsas after he saved the former's life following a confrontation with former employee Firefly. Black Mask presents Tsas with a briefcase filled with cash and advises him to finally live out his dream, knowing full well any dream of Tsas's would culminate in mass murder. Apprehensive at first on how to go about this, he eventually decides to take Mask up on his offer dressing in Armani suits and purchasing a warehouse as his base of operations. During an investigation into the discovery of several children murdered by Humpty Dumpty, Damian Wayne is captured by a man soliciting runaway kids with promise of a free meal and a place to stay. Damian discovers the man to be a close associate of Victor Tsas, and that Tsas has been slowly building a financial empire using runaway children and kidnapped orphans in a fight to the death arena where people bet on the winners. The winning child faces a new contestant, and so on until the last child left fights Tsas one-on-one, -on -one, with promise of freedom for winning. Having seen the horrors that Tsas has left, as well as a haunting memory of seeing the dead bodies of children he killed, Damien questions why Bruce or Dick have allowed a man like Tsas to be left alive despite their moral code against murder. Damien manages to subdue Victor and attack him viciously with a sword, after which he falls into Gotham Harbor. Not wanting to defy his mentor and late father's beliefs, he promises Dick that the blow wasn't fatal since he missed Sars's spine, but indicated that his survival was slim. Sars is later seen in captivity in Detective Comics, after Black Mask's apprehension, in Arkham Asylum. While no reference is made to Sars's injury, his presence in Arkham alongside Jeremiah strongly suggests the events of this issue take place subsequent to the injury meaning he did survive the attack. Tsas has appeared various times in the New 52 as an inmate of Arkham, 
and he is later seen attacking Batgirl in the Narrows, while on Venom. Tsas next appears in Detective Comics No. 18 written by John Lehman. He is released from Arkham Asylum by the Joker prior to the events of Death of the Family. Later, he is hired by Ignatius Ogilvy, the Emperor Penguin, to leave his mark on Gotham City, he is given a knife with Emperor Penguin's insignia on it. Tsas is later instructed to put the Man Bat Serum on the knife, as part of Emperor Penguin's plan to turn the population of Gotham City into Man Bats through an airborne virus. Tsas is temporarily transformed into one. During the Forever Evil storyline, Nightwing had just retrieved Victor Tsas from Chicago and was bringing him back to Arkham Asylum. Victor Tsas was then abducted by Superwoman and OWLMAN. Powers and abilities, in addition to his wiry at tall physique, Tsas is extremely agile and flexible, able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with even Batman for brief bouts. Though he favors slitting his victims' throats with knives, he has no reservations about tossing blades at opponents if the occasion calls for it, and even carries several spare knives for this purpose. Though he personally dislikes guns, considering them unreliable, Tsas is known to occasionally carry firearms in order to coerce his selected victims. Even barehanded, Tsas is a formidable opponent. As he is locked away in an enormous steel containment unit for 16 hours a day, he has made a habit of practicing isometrics in the cramped space to strengthen his body. Tsas is incredibly intelligent, and is described as having a brilliant criminal mind. He is constantly thinking quickly both while incarcerated and active, and some of his escapes have been a result of his cunning schemes. Tsas is completely unpredictable, having no qualms about who he kills, when and where. Thus, he is almost impossible to track, even if signs of his modus operandi appear evident, as there is no motive or clue trail to follow. Such unpredictability also renders him a danger to anyone and everyone who may encounter him. During the Streets of Gotham story arc, it is learned that Tsar sees the world as bathed in red, and everyone in it as a victim he has murdered. He envisions both friend and foe as having died at his hand with their throats slashed. During his battle with Damien, Tsar begins to lose his composure when he begins to see him as a living human being rather than as a dead body. Other versions equals Crimson Mist equals, in Batman, Crimson Mist, Tsas is one of the vampiric inmates of Arkham Asylum whom Batman slaughters. Batman tears Tsas's chest open with his talons to mark the scar which will represent Tsas's own life. He then drinks Tsas's blood and cuts off his head. Equals Flashpoint equals, in the alternate timeline of the Flashpoint event, Victor Tsas is imprisoned in the military Doom prison. During the prison break, Tsas is killed by the arsonist Heat Wave. Equals Smallville equals, Victor Tsas appears in Smallville Season 11. Chloe Sullivan and Lois Lane arrive in Gotham City and find Batman and Nightwing, who have been interrogating a criminal, known as Victor Tsas, on a rooftop. Batman questions Tsas and asks if he knows anything about the recent murder of the young man dressed like Superman. He responds with reference to his parole and that many criminals in Gotham City don't even know how to feel about the casino matter. After realizing that Tsas does not know anything about the case, Batman allows him to leave without incident. Equals Injustice, Gods Among Us equals, Tsas appears in Injustice, Gods Among Us comic, interrupting an argument between Superman and Batman, taunting Superman and asking him if he felt the release from taking a life. Wonder Woman then her cyborg opened Tsas's cell door, much to Batman's horror and Tsas's delight, only for the insane killer to be quickly swept away by the flash to the secure location Superman has created for the Arkham patients. In other media. Equals television equals, Victor Tsas makes his television debut in the Fox series Gotham, portrayed by Anthony Carrigan. This version of the character is a hitman working for Carmine Falcon and is always accompanied by two unnamed females. He first appears in Penguin's Umbrella, where Falcon sends him after James Gordon. They appear at the Gotham City Police Department where they get the other police officers to leave before engaging Gordon. Tsas wounds Gordon and wounds a female police officer who crosses his path. Renee Montoya and Crispus Allen come to Gordon's rescue. After their escape, 
Tsaus kills the female police officer and adds a tally mark on his arm making it his 28th kill. When Gordon's Fianca copyright Barbara returns to town to try to negotiate with Falcon to not harm Gordon, Falcon instead has Tsaus hold Barbara in his clutches. This was later revealed by Falcon when Gordon and Harvey Bullock confront Falcon with Mayor Aubrey James in their custody. After he reaches an understanding with Gordon which leads to Mayor James' release, Falcon orders Tsas to let Barbara go. In What the Little Bird Told Him, Victor Tsas speaks with Falcon about Liza being abducted by Fish Mooney. Tsas later accompanies Falcon to Mooney's nightclub. After Falcon strangles Liza to death, Tsas enters with the rest of Falcon's minions where Mooney and Butch Gilesian are captured and her nightclub is handed over to Oswald Cobberpot. In Welcome Back, Jim Gordon, Tsas and his female assistants find the defeated body of Falcon's henchman Bob on the floor after he was defeated by Butch Gilesian and kills Bob for letting this happen. Tsas traces Mooney and Gilesian to the nightclub and pursues them before Mooney can get revenge on Cobberpot. While Mooney escapes out a window, Galzian tries to buy her some time and is wounded by Tsas in the process. In The Blind Fortune Teller, Victor Tsas visits Oswald Cobberpot at his club stating that Falcon is not pleased with the low service. In order to help Cobberpot with his club, Tsas presents Butch Galzian to him where he reveals that he worked on Galzian for days. Tsas even does a demonstration where he is Galzian obeying Tsas and Cobberpot's every commands. In Rise of the Villains, Damned if you do, Tsas is now shown to be loyal to Cobblepot ever since Carmine Falcon retired. Tsas accompanies Cobblepot into raiding Gillian B. Loeb's apartment in order to persuade him to reinstate James Gordon into the Gotham City Police Department. In Rise of the Villains, Strike Force, Oswald Cobblepot sends Tsas to kill Randall Hobbs so that Theo Galavan can win the mayoral election. Randall runs from Tsas right into the Captain Nathaniel Barnes Strike Force. Though one Strike Force member was shot in the bulletproof vest, Tsas escapes by shooting a fire hydrant. Equals film equals, Tsas appears briefly in the 2005 film Batman Begins, portrayed by Tim Booth. Tsas is on trial for several murders, committed on orders from Carmine Falcon. Assistant District Attorney Rachel Dawes tries to get him sent to prison, but he is sent to Arkham Asylum thanks to the testimony of the hospital's administrator Jonathan Crane who is on Falcon's payroll. He escapes during Ra's al-Ul's attack on Gotham, and attacks Rachel and a child she is protecting. A promotional website for The Dark Knight reveals that Tsas is still at large. His last name is misspelled as is in Batman Begins, but correctly spelled in the promotional material for The Dark Knight. Victor Tsas appears briefly in the direct-to-video animated film Batman, Assault on Arkham, voiced by Christian Lands. Victor Tsas takes a woman hostage, but Batman saves her by shooting his grapple gun's hook into the brick wall behind them, then quickly retracts it so a chunk of the wall hits Tsas in the back of the head. Equals video games equals, Tsas appears as a boss in Batman, Dark Tomorrow. Tim Booth reprises his role as Tsas in the Batman Begins video game, in his original incarnation, rather than the hitman he's described as in the film. He first appears when Flas is attempting to interrogate him for information about Falcon's new partner, Batman releasing him from his chain in order to scare Flas into departing Tsas's cell so that Batman can question Flas, using Tsas as a threat. Tsas later makes a brief appearance during the riots where he attempts to terrify Rachel Dawes, but she takes him out with her taser while Tsas is distracted by Batman's arrival. Tsas appears in the Nintendo DS version of Lego Batman. The video game is an enemy bounty in the Villain Hunt minigame. Tsas appears as one of the villains in Batman, Arkham Asylum, voiced by Danny Jacobs. During the initial stages of the Joker's takeover, Tsas manages to escape confinement and take a guard hostage in prisoner pacification, strapping him to an electric chair. Batman manages to sneak behind Tsas and render him unconscious. However, Tsas later manages to get free killing guards in their break room and in the garden. Joker found him there and recruited him to torture Dr. Young for the Titan formula. Batman manages to render Tsas unconscious again, but Dr. Young's rescue is short-lived as a bomb takes her life shortly after. 
he is later seen in Scarecrow's final hallucinations as one of the villains escorting Batman into Arkham, similar to the guards who brought the Joker into Arkham Asylum at the start of the game. Later in the hand-to-hand -hand combat challenge modes, Sars appears as an NPC that Batman must fight along with the thugs. He carries two knives, and must be stunned to attack. Victor Tsars appears in the sequel Batman, Arkham City, voiced again by Danny Jacobs. Batman must track him down and foil his murders in a side mission, with Tsars calling him on various payphones and instructing Batman to find another phone within a time limit before Victor Tsars starts killing hostages. He explains his backstory over the course of the mission via phoning the player, including him losing his money gambling against Penguin in the Iceberg Lounge eventually revealing he feels his only purpose in life is killing. Batman eventually tracks him down to his hideout by tracking the series of communication towers he uses to bounce his telephone signal, and stops him before he kills two hostages. However, Detective Mode reveals a body in the water, suggesting a hostage tried escaping or committed suicide. Batman then puts Tsars in a cage where he kept his prisoners. It is mentioned by Penguin that Victor Tsars has murdered over 100 men, women, and children. It's also made apparent that he was captured by Penguin and put on display before escaping. Victor Tsars appears as a mini-boss in the Nintendo DS version of LEGO Batman 2, DC Super Heroes. In Batman, Arkham Knight, Victor Tsars made a surprising cameo appearance in a recording showing Oracle's kidnapping. He seems to look the same as he did in Arkham City. It's also revealed through a Gotham City story that Sars has been active in Gotham and has resumed his killings and Batman stumbles across three of his victims posed near Wayne Tower under a bridge. Equals books equals, the tie-in book for Batman begins featuring the development art, and the visual guides to the film, also feature a shot of Booth in costume, referring to Sars as a serial killer. In the credits and script for the film, as well as all the books in the graphic novelization, his name is spelled Zaz. The novelization of Batman Begins refers to him as Victor Tsars as does the video game. See also, List of Batman Family Enemies References